Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the final episode of Forza Motorsport 1. And it's been a very long road and a lot of events have been done and a lot of time has been spent on the game. But we are finally down to the last race, which is an endurance race and it is a Class A championship. So, we've got 20 cars eligible in the garage. And I'm just going to pick one randomly, I think, just to see what the track is. And then we have to decide what we're uh, going to use from there. I kind of like the look of the 360, though. The Challenge Stradale, or Stradale. Let's jump in that. What is it to finish it off? Oh, it's Silverstone. Right, it's not too bad. It's not quite Laguna Seca. It's not quite Sakuba. But Silverstone is still an absolute pain in the arse. Um, is this good enough, though? What have we got in here? 4GT. I think the 4GT is going to smash that, you know. Because that's got like 500 horsepower, isn't it? No, the GT2 and the Viper have got 400 and something. Um, so, uh, let's just see. So, first place receives the um, Dodge Viper ACR. Which, again, is, I think, a GT or something. Um, I might just buy the 4GT, you know. I'm kind of tempted to finish off the game with that. Let's have a look. Class A. If we go right to the end. Oh, the 4GT is actually at the end. 500 horsepower. Yeah, I mean... That's obviously... been tuned or something. Is it 580 horsepower? That's crazy. But the handling, that's just not going to have a chance because the handling's just terrible. I don't think the 360 is going to be good enough, even with upgrades, because it's A2 already. I'm going to buy the 4GT. I'm going to do it. I am going to do it, and I want it in uh, blue with white stripes. That's what I'm going to do. To be fair, they all look good. 178,000 credits is probably the most we spent on a car in a long time. Um, I don't need to upgrade it, I don't think. I'm going to go straight in with this car. And it's going to do the business, hopefully, on Silverstone. And then we'll be free and done with this game forever. Right, here we go. Final race. Let's do it. Oh, no. We start in fifth place. That is not a good start. But can this thing do the business? Depends how quick it is. Well, I bogged like crap off the line then. What does this rev to? Oh, it does handle well, though. I'm going to have to go in the inside of that. Otherwise, I'm going to crash into him. That was very interesting. It's been a long time since we've not started near the front of the grid, to be fair. I'm just going to get past these guys as quickly as possible. This handles pretty well, actually. Right, in the draft zone. We should be able to pull past these guys with this power, surely. To actually know what this revs to, seven and a half. We've got the Porsche, we've got the 355, we've got the uh, Viper. I don't know where I'm breaking, I'm doing very bad here. Oh wow, there's a massive collision back there. Changed up a bit early there, that's fine though. That GT2 is getting away currently. Oh god, that was a terrible corner. Please no. Right, I need to find out where the pit is as well on this. Let's get used to this car. I'm driving all over the place. It actually turns in quite nicely. Where's the pit entry? Right, the pit entry's nice and easy. That's just there. Right, okay. Noted. Get back here, GT2. You're too fast. That's a decent corner, though. It does understeer quite a bit. Which I think the 4GT is known for a little bit, but it's not too bad, to be honest. I'm just going to go round the outside of him, round that corner. That was quite nice. 
fuck this bit up though, quite badly. It grips really well. There's not much oversteer at all. Well, it's funny that the game uh, Forza put the 4GT in an A-Class and the uh, TVR Speed 12 and all the rest in S-Class, which is what PGR2 did not do. And it put the 4GT with the Selena 7, the TVR Speed 12, the Carrera GT, where it just did not belong at all. This is actually really nice to drive. Like I said, it's got a slight bit of understeer, but um, it's very manageable. No upgrades at all. It's just the bog standard 4GT. But uh, luckily for me, the other 4GT got completely taken out in the uh, opening stages of that, I think. Even in first gear, it doesn't like want to spin up its wheels it just puts down the power really well the thing is Silverson's not as hard as I first thought in the earlier stages of the game I thought this was the hardest track but um, now that I've played them a lot it's not too bad by far Tsukuba is the hardest track I've decided very close second is Laguna Seca. Those two tracks that AI just drive incredibly quick on, but Tsukuba is like next level. It's the hardest track, definitely. Third place, I don't know what the third hardest track is. There's a big gap, because all the rests are reasonable, but I'd say, is it Blue Mountains Raceway? It's probably this and Blue Mountains Raceway, but Silverstone Short feels more difficult than the Silverstone Long. Because they drive really quickly on the Silverstone Short for some reason. But on this one, you can see they're not actually that quick on some bits of it. Plus, these brakes are great. They don't lock up at all, really. change the first to get the car turning around and you can just accelerate out that barely ever happens with cars on this game you're usually riddled with oversteer and you have to really balance the throttle accelerating out but with this you can just plant the throttle done just lifts off or takes off sorry I've gone off there oh no she managed to keep it too quick into that. I have no idea what the correct line is through here, but I'm butchering it completely. That's dreadful. But only two tenths slower, so I can really go much quicker through that. That was decent, actually. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That was nice. Like, even this bit, you can just plant the throttle. Again, you can barely do that with a lot of cars. This is a different world to drive compared to the Speed 12 in terms of easiness. Getting more used to this track now, I think. Still taking weird lines, though. Like this one. I don't know what that was. I 
don't know what lap to pit on either. I'm assuming we can do half the race and then pit. No, oh, that's questionable. Yeah, yeah, we should be able to actually. Of course we will. It'll be like 16 minutes, won't it? That's still not good through there. Well, that was a bit more like it. Still not brilliant. Tenth quicker, though. I think the GT2 is not really dropping much further back. Unless something else has got into second. It might be the 4 GT, actually. If it is, I'm in big trouble. I'm glad I picked this car, though, because it's great. Something's catching up to me quickly. I think the 40 t is behind me. I didn't look which colour it was, to be honest. Something is reeling me in. I thought this was going to be easy, and now I've changed my mind. I'm going sideways through there. I've done that terribly as well. What is catching me up? Well, it might be the Viper, actually. You know? That looks like the Viper. And that's a bit worrying. Three point eight seconds. Yeah, he's catching up. I need to do this bit well because this is the section I pull away on. So I have to actually concentrate now. Right, that was okay. The weight shift through those corners is pretty weird. And that's definitely the part I'll pull away on, though. So, what are we up to now? 4.9, that's good. That was a terrible corner. And that was slow as well. And we've cut it. Basically, I'm eating my own words here. And that was terrible. I reckon the, um, the Viper might handle better than this. I'm not sure. That was better through there. Much better. Right, another lap done. Fuel's fine. Tyres are fine. Lap six done. That was actually really slow, though. And that was not good either. 4.1 seconds. We need to keep it about four seconds, I think. Try our best. really ruined that. That was awful. So hard to get the right lines through there. Oh, is that Viper going to catch up? 4.7. No, that's where I pull away. So that's the only bit I think I pull away on. And that was really wide. Although it looks like the racing line goes around that way, but it doesn't feel right. already brought it back to 4.2 seconds.
Please go away, Mr. Viper. That's better through there. Four point two seconds, that stayed the same. I don't know if I'm doing the right line there at all, but we're going with it. That was a decent lap. I don't think it's my quickest, though. Right, do I pit after I've done lap eight? That's the question. Four point one seconds behind. It's staying at four seconds. That's good news. That was much better. That was really good. Much better lines through there. That might be quicker. It's actually a tenth worse, so never mind. I thought it felt quicker, but apparently not. Basically, I haven't got room to make an error on this. Because each lap at that point, it's staying at 4.8 seconds. And there's an error. That's a bit too late on the brakes. I might pit, you know. Two wheels went on the grass then. That's terrible. I think we're going to pit. I'm going to do it. Where is it? Where is it? It's here. Nice and easy. It's not one of the easiest pits to go in that. Right. Six second pit. He definitely won't pit. He'll probably pit in a couple laps. I'm pretty sure it was the Viper. Something's going past there. That's the Ferrari 355. That's probably in fourth, I guess. And then there's two cars there that just went past. And then another Porsche. And then another Ferrari. That might have been the Challenge Stradale, actually. There's no slow cars in this, but um, oh no, was it the uh, was that the 4GT actually? I don't know where the 4GT is at the moment in this. That takes ages to drive into that pit. That's ridiculous how long that takes. Well, I'm in last place, but as long as there's no one near me, that's fine. That is one of the longest pit lanes I think I've seen, other than um, Sunset Peninsula infield, because that had a really long pit lane. I've never even seen the exit of this pit. There's no one coming. Why does it give you a, a penalty for driving it out on the pit? It, they've really not polished this game at all with that sort of stuff. Like, you're pitting. Why have you got a penalty for the next lap? Doesn't make any sense. The worst example of this is the, uh, the exit to the pit on Laguna Seca is not even the correct exit. It's like painted on the dirt. It's proper weird. Basically, I've no idea whether I'm going to win this. I had a four second lead going into it, but I can't make any mistakes. And I've just got to wait for them to pit. And you drop back so much by pitting on this track. Twenty six seconds minus the penalty, so it's twenty three second pit time. Which is mental. 
Don't know why I just changed it first then. Anyone pitting? Anyone gone for a pit? Two cars have. Don't know which cars they are though. So I'm going up to sixth place. That is the Porsche and something else I can't see. I don't know how many Porsches there were in this race, other than the GT2. I didn't look at the others. One thing's for sure, though. I need to keep driving well, otherwise I'm in big trouble. And that's not going to help, is it? Eight seconds ahead, the car ahead. Do you know what? It might have been the front runner that pitted because they're well close together on the track, which doesn't really make sense how that's happened. Break too late there as well. There's no, like, clear winner there, or clear leader, should I say. Looks like one of them's crashed. They're all bunched together, which is weird. They must pit soon. Are their tyres wearing or not? I haven't seen any tie wear in a, in a while in this game for some reason. Just because of the length um, tracks we're doing, or the length um, endurance races. I seem to change the tyres before they get uh, worn. What's in there then? Porsche, that's the GT2, and that's the Ferrari 355. Break way too early there. So there's three cars ahead of me. It's whether they pit. It must be the next lap they pit, surely. I'm catching them up, though. Car behind is 20 seconds. That's fine. Car in front is four seconds. Six laps to go, or five and a half. Way too wide into the massive understeer. They must have terrible tyres at the minute, the cars in front of me. So I'm catching them up. 34 seconds behind me, how? Oh, I keep going too wide into these corners. It's not been a great lap. Right, two are pitting, and one is not pitting. So one's still going on. What have we got then? That's the Dodge Viper, and... I don't know what that other one is. Was that the 4GT? Or was that a Ferrari? Looked like a 4GT to me. So I'm in second place behind someone that um, hasn't pitted, I think. What are you? that TVR? Is that TVR Tuscan? It's black, whatever it is. And I'm drafting it. Looks like a TVR Tuscan to me. The 
There's no way that's beating a 4 GT, that's for sure, if it is that. I've now got a 33 second lead, which I don't quite understand, considering the Viper was two seconds behind me at one point. It's definitely a TVR. And you can tell by the colour of its paint. Don't want to collide with it, though. Unless he gets in the way, which he is doing. I probably should just wait for him to pit, because he's definitely going to pit on this lap. How have I got so far ahead of the Viper when it was four seconds behind? We both pitted once. Unless they've taken ages to pit. Because that does not make sense to me. Why that's taken so long for them to pit. My only, the only thing I can think of is um, they crashed because the Viper was clear. So it must have spun out and got damaged or something. It's the only thing I can think of as to why it's just dropped behind so much. Because 25 seconds is stupid. I've like gained 20 seconds on it somewhere. Well, that's a fuck up, isn't it? First time I've actually gone off the track properly. As long as I don't damage the car, that's fine. Because um, I doubt I'm going to lose a 20 second lead. 32 seconds now. Someone's way out in front. I'm not breaking enough now. I'm losing concentration. That was awful. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing now. Right, lap 14, then 15, 16, what, three laps to go. Three laps of Forza Motorsport 1. felt quite decent but um, usually when I say that it's actually slower and it was actually quicker a tenth still 30 seconds ahead which is crazy that was nice that was not nice I nearly got a tyre on the grass, which screwed that up. I did not think I'd win by this margin. And again, that's too slow. I was still two, t two tenths up. questioning whether I actually need to change down there. It does help the car turn around a bit, but um, it might be overkill, to be honest. Oh, just quicker. I really screwed up the last bit there. Two laps to go, though. I could pit again and probably still be in the lead. Or I could finish 
I could drive through the finish on the pit lane. Four temps down. 30 seconds ahead. I'm actually pulling away as well, and the one that is ahead is getting caught up by something. So I am wondering whether the Dodge Viper did crash quite badly. And that's a massive cut, if ever I've seen one. stay in second gear doesn't really make much difference so we're going to do it oh. that was a terrible entrance I'm not even paying attention now but we've got one lap to go Could it be? Could we have completed the game? With a nice uh, last race, to be honest. The hardest endurance race is probably that one in Sakuba, to be honest. The D-Class one. Oh no, there was the... Um, oh crap, I'm really screwing this up now. It was the, um, the one in Laguna Seca, the classics endurance race, which was really difficult against that Ferrari. <laughs> 31 seconds ahead. I can't believe it. On a track like this, where is the 4GT? Who knows? I was tempted to finish in the pit, but um, just in case it doesn't register you finishing or something, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I was tempted to, and it probably would have worked, but um, I don't want it to cross the finish line when you're in the pit and then something doesn't register properly. But that's it. We're done. Last race. I'm just going to wait for them to finish, actually, because I want to see uh, what came where. Wow, I'm actually shocked. The Ferrari F355 came second and beat the 4GT by two and a half seconds. Then it was the GT2. Then it was the Viper GTS ACR. So something happened to that Viper. It must have crashed really badly. The 4GT had a crash at the start. And there was also the GT3 in there, which I didn't realise. And I've seen the Ferrari 360 challenge through Dale. But yeah, the 4GT got a monstrously quick lap. And then the Viper also got a really quick lap. And the Ferrari beat my lap time. But uh, yeah, I can't believe that came second. That's crazy. But that is it. This is our final prize car. It's a very nice looking Dodge. I can die happily now that we have completed Forza Motorsport 1, 100%. It's taken months. It's taken a lot of hours. But we can finally say, that if we press this button and look at the percentage, it says 100%. So let's have a look then. Go race. So point to point, 10 out of 10. Amateur, 20 out of 20. Professional, 20 out of 20. Championship Series, 15 out of 15. 
endurance 10 out of 10 it should give you like a little accolade or something just to let you know you've actually done the game but we finished on 15.3 million credits we'd driven 4400 miles played 45 hours 100% at RK, level 50, current credits 15 million, total winning 20 million, win percentage 94.9, which is okay, cars in the garage 109, value of the garage 21 million credits. So those are the final stats, and if we go and buy cars, 231 cars unlocked, so we can buy whatever car we like. But yeah, that's it, we are done, done with the game, and it's been a long road, thank you everybody for watching, and for the support. And uh, yeah, that is it really. I will see you in the next game and I hope you enjoyed as always. Take care everyone.